I would like to talk about one remarkable building that symbolizes Istanbul in a way in which most people's minds depict this great wonder when thinking of Istanbul. For centuries, this great building changed its holder as empires fell and rose throughout the history of this peninsula. Alongside possessing the building, there were major architectural conversions that took place in the building to give rather a political message. The question is, why were these changes made and whom these changes served? Arguing such problems requires some knowledge of Istanbul's socio-political history. And in this slide cast, I will be presenting these questions with interpretations of this building's radical transition. Here we can see a detailed illustration made by Anton Helbert to depict the great church of Hagia Sophia standing next to the Augustaeon Square during the later times of the Byzantine Empire, approximately 600 years ago. It was built in 537 AD when Emperor Justinian I wanted a new patriarchal seat for his Eastern Roman capital, Constantinopolis, designed by the great architects Isidore of Milet and Antiemius of Tralles. It was the largest cathedral in the world until the completion of Seville Cathedral in 1507. And here is how the building looks today and probably the closest it looked after its conversion to a mosque during the Ottoman conquest. When Sultan Mehmed II and his army took over Constantinople on the 29th of May 1453, he performed his Friday prayer in Hagia Sophia, which marked the conversion of its usage from a Greek Orthodox church to a Sunni Muslim mosque. Let's have a closer look at the physical transition. The most important aspect here is the preservation of the Byzantine architecture, which in fact kept its existence long after the Ottoman conquest. A lot of foreign cultural structures inspired the Turks, and until the arrival of the Baroque period of the early 18th century to Turkey, the mosques were constructed in a particular Byzantine architectural tradition. Nonetheless, there were apparent additions to the building and its complex. First, the minarets were erected to announce the call to prayer, then the mosaics inside depicting Jesus, Mary and the various Byzantine emperors were covered by whitewash and plaster to abase the Christian atmosphere. Later on, three mausoleums called Turbe were constructed for three different sultans just in front of the building, and the ritual fountain called Shadirwan was added to the complex. Finally, by building a medrissa where religious readings and archives were preserved, the complex was completed and transformed into a kulliye, an Ottoman social complex. These kinds of changes took place in order to utilize the building for the Sunni Muslim majority of the population. However, there were more meanings to these changes as they bear a symbolic value of power and superiority. Just as the name of the peninsula and its city gradually changed after the Roman conquest from Byzantium to Constantinople, it was renamed to Istanbul after the Ottoman hegemony to Turkicize its name. The conver conversion of Hagia Sophia was similar to such a symbolic transition. It was not a religious action, in fact, according to Islamic traditions, Prophet Muhammad stated in his speeches that the conversion of a religious building would be indecent. The conversion of Hagia Sophia was a political move, perhaps to send a message to Christian enemies that your most sacred became our most sacred. Such traditions were evident in the other parts of the world as well. In Spain, for example, the Great Mosque of Cordoba, built during the reign of El Andalus, was later converted into a Roman Catholic cathedral after the Conquesta. In this regard, Hagia Sophia was a great example as a victim of such political action. Let's quickly go back in time. During the Latin occupation of Constantinople in the Fourth Crusade, the church was ransacked and heavily damaged by crusaders and converted into a Roman Catholic cathedral. Up until the Nicene Empire's recapture of the city, 
The church was only used as a coronation building and kept its Byzantine liturgical traditions. Symbolicism played a significant role in Ottoman art, and calligraphic texts were used overwhelmingly in almost every corner of architectural design. To preserve such craftsmanship in art, the buildings had to be constructed firmly and maintained with utter care. This given value to the architectures prevents them from being collapsed and destroyed in natural disasters, such as earthquakes, that often occurred in Istanbul. After the fall of the Ottoman Empire and the Turkish Republic's foundation, Hagia Sophia was ordered to become a museum by the first Turkish president, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. He viewed Hagia Sophia not as a political advantage, but as a work of civilization. He approached Hagia Sophia not with a religious fanaticism, but with a cultural integrity. He saw Hagia Sophia as the common cultural heritage of humanity, beyond being a mosque and a church. Nevertheless, as politicians come and go, their policies can also change dramatically. In 2020, the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan violated the given status of Hagia Sophia and converted it back to a mosque, which became the 3469th mosque in Istanbul. Was it merely a religious movement that aimed to meet the spiritual needs of the people, or was it a similar political action to gain an advantage, just as in the Ottoman era? This question is yours to answer.